Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. Before I forget, what I would like to ask anyone who is watching my channel at the moment is I have my regular end of the year survey for my channel, which I'm going to leave linked down below, which is an opportunity for you guys to give me some feedback on the videos that you enjoy watching, to give me suggestions for things you'd like to see in the future, especially as I'm forward planning for 2024. So if you have a moment, it should only take like three to five minutes maybe unless you've got a lot to say. The link is down below if you get a chance to fill it in I would be most appreciative of that because it is useful when I'm starting to think about what's coming up in the next couple of months. So thank you and we're going to talk now about the books that I read this week. This wrap up features six books. It is not the entirety of what I read this week because there were books that I read for a reading vlog that is coming out later this week which is part of the Battle of the Book Boxes series. There are more books and I will be talking about them later in the week. But today I'm just going to be wrapping up the six other books that I have read since last week's wrap up. And we're going to kick it off with a book that I'm currently reading, which is Steel's Edge by Elona Andrews. This is the fourth book in the Edge series and is for the live show that's happening next weekend. Despite being its own independent story, it is kind of tricky to talk about the series as a whole in the fourth book because so much has happened but in this one we are following Richard and Charlotte. Richard is one of the oldest cousins in the Mar clan and he is on a vengeance quest to track down slavers who have been kidnapping children and women in the weird. His paths cross with Charlotte who is a healer and she earned a noble title in the weird because healers are revered but she has been unable to conceive a child so her husband left her and she ended up taking refuge in the edge where she met and befriended Rosa's grandmother from the first book and then when the slavers end up in the edge and they destroy Charlotte's home and they take the closest people from her she is on a vengeance quest and that's when her path crosses with Richard. So this book is so far very hard-hitting there's a lot of darker themes in this one and I'm currently 50% of the way through the book I'll finish it later today I am really enjoying it. I like the interplay between Charlotte and Richard because they're both isolated characters. Richard, while very personable and charming, doesn't talk a lot. And Charlotte is just dealing with all of the blows life has dealt her. And you know, the two of them have this common cause of trying to end this slave trade ring. And I'm really interested to see where the next half of this book goes. So you will hear about it in next week's wrap up and in the live show if you are joining in. I'll leave all the information about the live show down below. I also read Booed Up by Danielle Allen. I read this on Halloween because why not read a Halloween story on Halloween. This is a romance novella. It is about Malika and Dre who meet at a mutual friend's Halloween party and they hit it off really well. They're chatting, they get along great and then being the only two black people at this party when their friends break out a Ouija board they like peace out we're gone because this does not end well for anyone and so they end up sleeping together and having a great time and trying to figure out you know can they make this relationship work because they both live in different places and then the next day when they see their friends again there may or may not have been some magic involved we don't know but it's a potential it's there it's a question mark and this was just short and fun and enjoyable I really enjoyed the characters I loved the social commentary and I just had a really enjoyable time reading it I also read Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean this is a book that is coming out later this week it is a contemporary romance with a hockey player hero and his relationship with his best friend's sister slash one of his really good friends and it is set during a Jane Austen fair period. So Jack Parker is the bad boy of the NHL and when he was in his teens he lost his dad and he's never really quite dealt with that grief and so he takes it out on the ice. For the longest time he's had this crush on Ollie who is his brother's little sister but is also a really good friend of his and has just and you know knows he he can't go there. Ollie has also been dealing with a lot of things in her life. She has been dealing with chronic pain and she is being gaslit by a lot of medical professionals and later in the book she finds out that she has endometriosis and so that's that's part of the journey of this and there's some caretaking scenes and things like that. So both of these characters are going quite through quite a lot and when Jack is suspended from the NHL he ends up back home where he's spending time with Ollie and his best friend and she eventually convinces him to help her out at the Jane Austen fair because they are missing their oh gosh I've already forgotten the name of Wentworth? Wentworth? No. This is why I don't do Jane Austen because I don't remember the characters names. Okay so Ollie is playing Lydia and she needs someone to play Wickham and he volunteers and so that's the start of them actually having to spend a lot of time together in very close proximity and gives them the impetus to actually reveal their feelings for one another. And then of course they're dealing with 
all these diagnosis and an emergency surgery and things like that. So there are quite a few content warnings and things like that in the book. I've mentioned most of them as I've been talking about the book, but if you read the author's note at the start of the book, it's all in there. She's very, very clear and specific about what is coming up in the book. So make sure you're in a good place when you're reading it because it does deal with quite a lot. But yeah, it was enjoyable and it was fun and I really enjoyed it. And you know, there was hockey at the start and hockey at the end and, and that was fun. And yeah, I thought this was just a really play, fun play and combination of ideas thrown into a contemporary romance. I also finished Masters of Death by Libby Blake. So you guys know I started this last week. I started reading it and then I switched to the audio and I've just sort of been listening to it as I've been doing chores throughout the week. And it's interesting because I stand by what I said last week. I'm, I'm really intrigued by the story and the idea, but I still found it really hard to follow the story because there's so many characters and they, the story changes perspective, like within paragraphs of each other. And you have to sort of remember and shift where you're going. And so while I probably needed the audiobook for the first half, I probably needed to read the second half because the shift happened so quickly. And as I was listening to it, I had to really quickly adjust to who was now talking and which perspective we were in because they end up playing the game of immortals against various opponents. And everyone's playing different games and they move between those games but they don't tell you that they're moving between the games they just switch perspective and in an audiobook that was kind of hard to keep track of but you know from a story perspective it was deeply fascinating because you have all of these paranormal supernatural creatures characters who are all dealing with things and really what it comes down to is the difference between mortality and immortality and I found that really really interesting I'm gonna have a really hard time rating this on Goodreads because I actually don't don't know because I'm not quite sure what format would have best suited me to read this book consecutively. I enjoyed the characters, I thought the concept was really cool and I liked the writing style and sort of the humour that was in it. It's very me. So yes, I did finally finish this. And then I started the Australian Readathon and my first book for the Readathon was Shield by Evie Mitchell. This is the fourth book in the Nameless Souls MC series. So this is an MC romance. This one is set in Australia. It is kind of orangey on the cover. It is a self-published title and in this one we have Audrey who is a very intelligent woman and I'm not quite sure if she's coded as neurodivergent she kind of read that way to me but it wasn't explicitly stated on, on the page so she is someone who is very comfortable with facts with information she is a scientist and was a scientist before the end of the world and when everything ended and she lost all of her people she sort of has retreated into herself and so she looks at things in a very black and white kind of way and that makes her very blunt and very to the point with people which can be off-putting for some of the characters but most of them just know that that's her her personality and the nameless souls are traveling from southeastern australia to the north they're trying to install these transmitters that will allow them to communicate because infrastructure and everything has gone kaput because this world is a post-pandemic kind of world not covid but another pandemic and it's audrey's devices that are helping them to do that and along the way they end up stumbling across the president of the Nameless Souls. His name is Shield and he is just immediately intrigued by Audrey because she just says what she wants and she wants no strings attached orgasms and that's it. Like that's that's all she wants. He figures out pretty quickly what it is that she actually wants and their relationship was really fun to see develop. If you like a darker romance or an MC romance this series is pretty fun to read and it is set in Australia which you don't often get. And then the second book that I read for the Australian Readathon is actually a collection of poetry. It was The Jaguar by Sarah Holland Batt. This won the Stella Prize this year and it is Sarah exploring her father's Parkinson's illness and his death and the effects of that on her, on her family, reflecting on their relationship. It's pretty hard hitting. It is a very interesting read. I haven't quite read a poetry collection like this in a long time so while I read poetry a lot I don't necessarily read collections that center around a main idea anymore. So I was really happy to go back and actually be able to read this since I purchased it during my birthday book walk. But yes, content warnings in here. It does deal with illness. It does deal with death and grief and all of the associated feelings with that. So if you are using this for the readathon, it would count for orange on the cover set in Australia because part of it is set in Australia. And also I suppose you could use it for the free space if you just wanted to throw it in there. All right, so those are the books that I have read this week. In the comments, I would love to know if you have read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up in the future. Otherwise, feel free to share what you have been reading and loving this week. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a motorbike emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.